Real talk with Tim McGee. Morning. She doesn't want you guys to eat her? No, but she's not going to have a choice if she's drunk. And her face is all pulling up. Ma'am! 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 I'm not chasing her. I'm not chasing her. She doesn't want us. She doesn't want us. Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Tim McGee. Today's story is a, a crazy story. Uh, if you, in case you haven't heard, a story out of Cleveland, Ohio, there was a uh, situation where a woman by the name of Megan Turner rammed her car into another car who I, apparently she got into with two men. She was visiting their house. She got into it with them and she ran her car into their car while they were parked. And in the process of doing that, she hit another person's car who had nothing to do with it. His car just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. But that's not the whole story. The police comes. And so there's camcord, there's camcord uh, recording of the policemen once they get there. And so the man who car is innocently hit, he's telling them what he heard. Uh, and someone came and woke him up and told him that, hey, somebody hit your car, so when you come out, I'm gonna show the video later. It's a long video, so I'm not gonna show the entire video. I'm gonna show it in bits and pieces, the most important part, but it's a 24 minute video where the police is at this scene and the woman who rammed her car into these people, she's walking back and forth with the police on at least two occasions, even going into the car, which is a crime scene. The EMS tells them walks up to the police officer when they get to the scenes and tell them, hey, that woman right there is the driver of that car who rammed into the people and she's she has all type of bruises on her face, her eye, one her eyes are swollen closed and she smells like alcohol. Right there, first of all, they should have got her when, they, when people said that she purposely ran into them. Secondly, when the EMS said that, hey, she smells like alcohol, they should have got at her. And then thirdly, there was at least four witnesses who have called in and said a woman was getting beat up. So prior to them getting there, they had knowledge that this wasn't just a crash, but the people who she crashed into, the two men jumped out and started beating her up. And at least one of the witnesses said he pulled out a gun. Now remember the gun part. So, uh, and so they said that he, the man beat her like 27 car, 27 times inside the car, pulled her out of the car, then beat her some more and then started plumbing her and stomping her on the ground. Sounds about right if if a woman purposely drives into your car. You know, you can judge people, but when you mad, you know, that car is a weapon and they hit your car. So, you know, he probably took it to the extreme, but I can understand physical violence at that time. I'm not saying it's okay, but I understand it, you know. But anyhow, uh, but apparently she did that in retaliation because she, they must have had gotten to argument, but I'm thinking that they may have stole her gun prior to her running into their car. I don't know, that hasn't came out yet, but I'm thinking, because they said they seen her, she told the police when she walked past, and I'm moving too fast, when she walked past him the first time, the EMS was pointing him out, the police should have grabbed, they let her walk right by. You know, you we see the police when they grabbing people who ain't got nothing to do with it, trying to figure it out, but they had more than enough information that this one was involved in the crime. She walked right past them on, their, on the camcorder, they're ma'am, ma'am, she's ignoring them, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. They, they wait till she get halfway up the block and start following her, ma'am, ma'am. And then you hear one of the police say, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not, I, I don't want to deal with her. Uh, uh, and then the AMS says, and she's drunk. Uh, so they, they ask the EMS, the police ask the EMS, uh, did, she, did she refuse help? They was like, yes, she did, but it doesn't matter when you're intoxicated and involved in an accident. So the EMS basically trying to tell the police his job. Police still didn't apprehend her. They just, ma'am, ma'am, let her walk off and then say, I ain't, I ain't dealing with this. I'm not chasing her. If she don't want help, then we're not going to help her. This is not about help. This is also about a crime. 
that later on turns into a murder. Oh yeah, that's what this crazy story is about. The, the, because they, on two different occasions, they engaged this woman and didn't follow proper protocol. You know, at that point, I'm not advocating arrest, but at that point, some lives could have been saved, you know, and instead they let this situation develop. And this is why black people take crime into their own hand or judgment, ju justice into their own hand, because this careless video is an example of why we don't trust the police, because they don't give a fuck about what really went on. They were just writing a report. They were basically dealing with this situation as if it was a traffic stop, just a fender bender. And that's far from what it was. There was an altercation that led to cars and and cars was involved and guns was involved and all type of shit was involved. But they dealt with it like a traffic stop. So then she come back a second time. This time, the guy who, the black guy whose car got hit instantly, he, someone re recorded the whole thing before the police got there. He recorded the actual beating. I tried to find that video. I couldn't find it. But there's a video of the 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 whole confrontation, her running the car into them, them jumping out of beating her, the weapon, all of that. The man tells the police he has it, and the police don't even want to see it. So then he he sell, and then and then and then the woman comes back to the car a second time. This time she goes in the car. The car still crashed. It's the other car on the curb. The car still in the street crash. She shouldn't be allowed to go in the car. It's a crime scene. She's all in the car, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. What's going on? And what's going on is I, I, and then the black dude, the innocent bystander says, oh, yeah, they hit her. You know, he's talking about beating her up, but he would, but he didn't look at the video. Then he looked at the video and then she tried to feed off what he said. Like, yeah, uh, they, I got assaulted and beat up and then they, then they crashed my car. That was a lie. She crashed their car and her car into them, but she tried to make it seem like they crashed her car. How are they going to crash your car when they in a different car and you ran into them? Bad policeman. So the guy looked at the video right, right, right before, right after he said that they hit her. He comes back and says, "Oh no, she ran into them." And then the police goes to look at the video. He sees it, doesn't take her on the rest. They just stand there, continue. He walks to the officer, okay, ask his partner, oh, "What's your badge on them?" They still writing it up as an accident. She's in the car, and he's like, "What's going on?" They assaulted me and beat me up, and they robbed me. And then she walks off again. They let her walk off again. So they, the video ends up going on and they end up cutting it off after 24 minutes later until the cars got told. But apparently she came back a third time and told them that she wanted to press charge and report, uh, you know, that they stole her gun. She has a concealed weapon and they stole her gun. So I don't know if they stole the gun after she rammed the car into him. But I'm thinking that they must have stole the gun because she was hanging with them and it turned into an argument and a fight. They must have took her gun and she knew it, so she ran her car into them because if she had her gun when they was running up on her, she knew these men was going to beat her up at her. She would have shot them. I don't think she had her gun then. I think they had already sold her gun, and when she hit them with the car, they jumped out and beat her up and then pulled the gun now, her own gun. That's what I'm thinking is going to turn out, what it's going to turn out because that's what it led into, drinking, argument, and they must have took her gun, and that's what she said. They robbed her and took her gun and beat her up. So, uh, So after that, they don't, because the police don't deal with this as a crime like it is. She comes back six hours later with her 19-year-old daughter, her 16-year-old son, and a 43-year-old man. And they basically, the son and the man basically just start shooting at people, you know. And they end up hitting a 34-year-old man by the name of Joseph Owens, who was not even involved at that incident. Wasn't he there early? He just happened to be at the wrong time driving his girl's car to visit a friend, and he got shot in the head. And people that was on the block returned fire at their group, shooting the woman who hit, did the hit and run. She was she didn't even run. She was there. But they wrote it up as a hit and run. And, and there's more with the police officer, too. But uh, And so they end up uh, shooting the daughter, in the back and, and that's how they caught her. And so that's how he knew where it was. And so they tied all of it to this 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 video of the police recording their first engagement with them and treating the whole scene. He, all of us who dealt with police officer in different situations, especially accident like this, we know how they deal with it in that situation. When she walking away from the crime scene around the block and, 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 and instead of saying, I'm not gonna chase her or deal with that, he should have called back up like they usually do and be like, yes, we have a person that was involved in a possible hit and run and she's not cooperating and this and that and she smelled like alcohol and she's left the scene of the crime. And, you know, they didn't do none of that. They didn't care. They basically said it on the camera. They just wrote it up like it was an accident. And so this woman came back later because these people stole her gun. They didn't write it up and they didn't even put that in the report. They just wrote it up as a hit and run. 
they ain't even put all the other stuff in there. So when this stuff happened, it hit the fan and came out. Now this video came out. Now these two police officers has been charged with a couple crimes uh, of not doing their duty, uh, failing to report a uh, uh, robbery, failing to report a crime, failing to report DUI, and all these things that went down with it that led to this murder. I think they should be fired, but now they're on lesser duties, which means they're probably sitting on death duties and stuff like that, you know, but this is what we're used to. So I'm going to show y'all this video uh, and, you know, you can check out the video and see for yourself. And then I'm going to come back and say a couple more things. Ma'am. Excuse me. What's going on? Can do it again. Okay. Any questions for us? Oh, I just need the number so I can call my insurance company. Yeah, that's uh, this is gonna be the port number, okay? Oh, okay. Right there in the bottom. Okay. That's both of us here. All right, y'all gonna tow it for me? Uh, it's up to you. It's your car. We yeah. can we gotta tow it. So that's it. Yeah, tow it. Get out of here, man. Please, I appreciate you. All right. You got the boat? Uh... I haven't gotten checked in on that. You got anything else in the car? Huh? You got anything else in the car? Any values? Do you want to take it? Yeah, I'm trying to see. Did y'all see that shit? <clears throat> she not only came, walked by once, but she came back twice and got all up in the car. Where you know where accident crime happened like that, where a person used a car to ram into some people she was getting into with drunk, and she gets to walk back and forth past the police, not give her license, not give ID or anything. Police don't ask her for a license. Police let her go inside the car. Don't apprehend her. And then at the end of that video, you heard the police say, I don't want to deal with that. Now, if she was a white woman, would he be saying that? I don't want to deal with that. She committed a crime, but that's that racist ass mentality. I don't want to deal with that. And that's how they deal with us. We're used to that. So now the woman and the people she brought back are all locked up. The man, the 43-year-old man, he's locked up for a million, a million dollar bail. His name is uh, Jeremy Ingleton. Uh, the daughter, 19-year-old daughter, her name is Ty Syra Turner. She's 19. She's the one that got shot in the back when they came back six hours later. And that's how they got caught because she had to go to the hospital. And her 16-year-old brother's locked up, no bill, because he's 16. And the woman who st started all, she is also locked up for a half a million dollar bill. And they're all charged with aggravated murder. Uh, this is a tragic story, and my condolence to 34-year-old uh, Joseph Owens, who just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and lost his life. Uh, but this is what we're used to in the black community, and this is why we end up having to take gestures into our own hand, because look at that nonchalant attitude. They treated it like a traffic stop. They didn't want no parts of that. And because of that, people lost their lives. 
innocent people or innocent person and other people end up having to bring their family members to get involved because they didn't properly deal with this. But I'm going to keep my eyes on this story and thank you for tuning in again. This is Real Talk with Tim McGee. Support, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you can know when I post new videos. And uh, thank you for the support for those who have.